Hey, Jason Rogers here. What I want to do for you in this video is break down the financials of a real life business that's on the marketplace that is available for purchase. So what we're going to do right now, let's slide over to this spreadsheet that I created for you. And actually, if you go right here, you see this highly regarded property management company. This is a real business for sale that we're actually looking at right now. So I want to go through with you how I would analyze this business and how I would try to figure out, is the deal we're talking about here a good deal? So let's take a look, right? So what we have is a property management company. This is a service-based business. They're asking $1.1 million for the business. It's doing $600,000 a year in revenue. It's doing approximately $300,000 a year in EBITDA. So the first thing we wanna figure out is what's the multiple? Meaning how many times earnings, AKA EBITDA, EBITDA stands for earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. How many times earnings or how many times EBITDA is this business trading for? What we're gonna do is equal sum 11 divided by three. Right, and you can see 11, we're just taking it off the zeros here, right? 11 divided by three equals 366%. If we move that to a number, that's basically 3.66666 times earnings. Now, what I can say for service-based businesses is ideally you wouldn't pay more than three times earnings. Two to four is pretty standard. Three is really, I would say, that middle ground. And so ideally we'd be paying three times earnings for this business. So this is the asking multiple. Right, they're asking for 3.6 times earnings. Now we of course can move the, uh, we don't need that many different uh, percent or, or decimal points here and I'm gonna make this bigger, right? They're asking for 3.6 or 3.7 times earnings. Now maybe we say the desired multiple, right? Let's see the desired multiple. Let's say we want it to be three times earnings, right? That's a desired multiple. So let's say we would prefer to pay three times earnings, right? So what is the desired multiple purchase price? And I'm gonna leave that written smaller there. Oh, it's, it got big, so never mind. I'm not gonna do that because uh, what the heck? We're just gonna move everything out here. So what I'm gonna do now is figure out equal sum 300,000, that's the earnings, times three. And you obviously know the answer, 300,000 times three is $900,000, right? So this is what we would like to pay for the business. We would like to pay approximately $900,000 or less for this business. They're asking 1.1 million, right? So really we're talking about a $200,000 difference, right? If we take 1.1 million versus $900,000, there's, there's $200,000 that are, that are in the difference. So what we could do in this case is we could say, look, Mr. Business Owner, you want 1.1, I want to offer $900,000. What do you say about a $1 million purchase price? He's probably going to say, oh, I wouldn't consider that. But you say, look, that offer stands for the next 24 hours. Or maybe you, you write a formal LOI and say, we will move forward if you accept this offer within 72 hours. Talk with your lawyers about the specifics of how to make offers in the legal aspect of it. But really, create a deadline, create a short period of time where the, the seller can either say yes or no so that you either do a deal or, or move forward towards doing a deal with the seller or you just say, okay, fine, if you want that much, we'll go on to the next one. But let's say you were able to agree upon a $1 million purchase. Let's just say, okay, let's just say for the sake of argument, that you agree we're gonna pay $1 million. Now, let's figure out how many times earnings we're gonna be paying and we do a $1 million deal, right? So we have a one zero 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 divided by that EBITDA. And really now we're talking about paying 3.333 times earnings, right? You're, you're right around that three times earnings marker. That's not a bad deal. Now, of course, that's dependent on the location of the business, the strength of the business, rather the income and the EBITDA over the recent years has been increasing versus decreasing. Those are all important factors, the clientele base, how loyal they are, all of those things. But all of the things created equal, paying just over three times earnings, that's not a terrible deal, right? So in this case now, you're really poised if you, if you were able to negotiate that $1 million purchase price that we talked about here, right? If you were able to agree on that, and we can almost draw, an, an, we can underline that because we just, what we just mapped out here is, okay, this is really what the, the business owner wanted, the 1.1 million. This is what it was doing in revenue. This is what it's doing in earnings, right? They were asking 3.7 times earnings. We wanted to pay three times earnings. We agreed on 3.33 times earnings, right? We, we split the difference. And really, if you recall, this was actually uh, 3.67, right? So 
we, we really split the difference here perfectly. We're right at that happy medium. We split the difference and that's, that's oftentimes what you're gonna find in negotiation is splitting the difference can work despite what some people say. Now, let's go into, okay, how are we gonna get this deal financed? And firstly, if you've watched my recent videos, you know that especially in the United States of America, the SBA program is probably the best way to get a deal financed. Why? Because the government is essentially going to back your loan on behalf of the bank. It means the bank is not in as risky of a position and therefore, you can be more aggressive in your terms. So let's say here, obviously we need to get a $1 million deal done. Let's see how much would a 1 million, let's just assume for a second, let's just play crazy. Let's just assume we could get a million dollar loan. How much would a $1 million loan cost per year, right? How much would a $1 million loan cost per year? And let's assume at 6%, which is a decent interest rate these days on a 15 year amort, which is kind of short amortization. How much would that, how much would that cost? Whoops, here we go. So let's do this, give me one sec. Okay, so now we're on the commercial loan calculator. Let's calculate a loan here of 1 million at a 6% interest rate on a 15 year amortization. And let's say it's fully amortized just for the sake of, uh, of the moment. Okay, that is going to cost us $8,438.57, right? So this is the loan, right? How much would a $1 million loan cost per year at 6% on a 15 year amortization schedule? It is going to cost 8438, and I'm just gonna call it 8439, right? Because I don't wanna do the, the percentage, right? Or, or the cents. It's gonna cost 8439, okay? That's approximately how much it's gonna cost per month, right? This is, that's how much it's gonna cost per month. Okay, and of course that's a dollar signal. Okay, now let's figure out per year, how much is that gonna cost per year? Equal sum, it's gonna be 8439, 8439 times 12. Okay, it's gonna cost a little over $100,000 a year. As you see here, it's gonna cost 100, whoops, let's make that a little wider. It's gonna cost you $101,000 in 268 or 101 and change, right? So now let's, you know, we have that 8,000 per month, we have the 101 per year, and we have our EBITDA here of 300,000. So let's calculate the all important DSCR, okay? How much is our DSCR, our debt service coverage ratio? Well, equal sum, we're gonna take 300,000 divided by this. And it should be just under 300%. That's exactly what we get here. So let's change that to a percent. We're dealing with a DSCR of 296%. That is a sweetheart DSCR, right? So what I'm really saying for you, as a side note, banks will finance anything over 125 to 150% DSCR, especially if they believe in you and your leadership and management team, which is why you wanna build a world-class advisory board or a world-class board of directors. But with this DSCR, where your free cash flow is covering debt service by almost 300%, yeah, you can get that financed. And we're talking about a full $1 million loan. Just as an example, I typed in, this is literally my search, property management company for sale. I clicked here, right? First listing, I went down like five or six, and I forget which one it was, where was it? I went down five or six, here it is, the highly regarded property management company. I clicked that, Outstanding opportunity to purchase a well-established and reputable first serv full service property management firm in NYC. And boom, here's where it is. It's right there, right? So look, do we know this deal is hot? No. Do we know that this is the true EBITDA, that this is the true revenue? No, we don't. That's the importance of due diligence. But what I can tell you is if what these individuals are saying is true, and if you have a strong team that's built around the property management industry, then right here is a deal you can potentially get financed, and it took me 15 minutes to find it. So it's really not that hard to get deals done, especially in the service-based business if you have a really strong leadership team and you do all of the due diligence necessary to ensure when you bring a deal to a bank that it's a hot deal with very strong financials. Ideally, you're buying a strong leadership team that you're gonna be acquiring. Essentially, when you buy that business, there's a strong leadership team associated. You combine that with your strong advisory board or your strong board of directors. You combine that with really having a passion for making sure this business is gonna be a success. And you combine that with getting SBA financing. And seriously, you can get your deals financed.